so for today's craft i'm going to show you how to hem baseball pants and this is not for everyone of course but i just want to help out the moms who have kids in baseball and every season they have like new pants almost right and you have to hem them or you have to go and find someone that can do it so for me it's easier to just do it myself since i do have a sewing machine and I kind of know how, you know, I've gotten better over the years, trust me. But I have two pairs of this, I don't know, Champ Pro pants. They're open bottom. So it's kind of like the, the loose fit. And then my son likes to have the elastic sewn in on the bottom. And this just helps, you know, keep out the dirt, really. So I sew in the elastic and I hem it. And, you know, before I would have to cut off a huge chunk because they're small usually i also wash my clothes or whatever i'm sewing before i hem it but this is a hundred percent polyester pant and i know for a fact it's not gonna shrink or it's not gonna shrink much so what i did first the first step would be to have your kid try on the pants so I had them i had my older son try it on and i just flipped it up and pinned it you can always mark it you don't have to use a pin on one side is fine you could do both either way and then once i have it pinned since i only did one side i will fold it in half and then get the measurement for the other side sorry it's kind of out of focus Okay, so make sure it's even and then you're just going to fold it down or fold it up, I guess, the same. And I'm not a seamstress. This is just how I, I do it. I used to ask my mom to do it all the time, but it became too often. Like every season, especially my older one, since they play, I guess, more seriously. Um, and they slide so many holes and then when there's holes in the knees it is reinforced but they yeah you got to get new pants sometimes and these are actually really cheap on amazon i think they're like 20 bucks or something so every season i try to get him one or two new pants at least for game days you know okay so after i do that i kind of fold it and you can use chalk this is white chalk or you can use a pen a friction ball pen you're not going to see this anyway so use whatever you want sharpie i don't know up to you and then it's just easier because i can squeeze it like this and then mark a line it's a little bit harder to do with a pen you could even use like oh the camera's moving sorry like sidewalk chalk it doesn't have to be seamstress chalk okay and now i'm gonna turn the pants inside out so just be careful don't poke yourself okay so now it's turned inside out and you have the white marks you can take the pins out and then we can unfold it and then totally up to you um I like to draw a line so I'll get like a ruler and I'll draw a line from one end to the other try to make it straight you know, this side seems longer let me double check that okay yeah so we are so I, I grabbed the ends and I went all the way down the side and match up the sides of the pants and one side is longer because I have the markings in the same spot that happens sometimes especially with like I wouldn't say cheap but you know you know pants like that so I will go with the longer one so let's see it's like almost a inch shorter so weird let me triple check yeah okay so one side is longer so 
I am just going to use the longer, actually they're the same pretty much. This I'm going to use the lowest line just to be on the safe side. So I'm just going to make a line across with the chalk. Okay, and depending on the kind of elastic you use, I'm using a half an inch elastic to half an inch or five eighths. Yeah, half an inch. Um, you can use any size you want. I mean, I just always have used these, so half an inch. Um, I prefer, like if I have a choice, I will use this one that's, it says non-roll. It's a little bit stiffer, but I only have this much of this one. So I'm gonna use just this regular one. I guess the difference is like this, if you can see. One is kind of softer and silkier, and this one's a little stiff. I guess meaning it won't fold on itself eventually. For this kind of like item, I don't think it really matters. But because my elastic is half an inch, I'm gonna add half an inch on top of that for the, the seam allowance. I'm going to measure one inch from this line and then I'm gonna cut the rest off. If you have pants and you think you're gonna like, your son's gonna grow or your kid's gonna grow and you wanna like, take out the hem eventually just you can totally do the same thing I just like to cut it off because I know he's gonna use it up and not I'm not gonna have to change the hem but you could make it longer so that you could take out the seam and move it down I'm not gonna do that though so I'm just gonna measure one inch and then mark it in a few spots Okay, and so before cutting, just make sure everything is nice and flat. And then I'm just gonna cut straight across. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is zigzag stitch around. You don't really have to, it won't really fray but I just like to do it just so it looks better. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and come okay, back. I did my zigzag, zigzag stitch, or you could serge it. Totally up to you. And now I'm gonna cut my elastic. So I already measured the, I used the tape measure and I measured around my son's ankle at the point where he wants his pants. And it was eight inches. So I'm gonna add on one inch to that measurement. So I'm gonna cut two nine inch pieces of elastic. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is fold up the one inch from your chalk mark. And then I'm just gonna pin it. Whatever way I sewed the, what is it called? The seam, I want it to be facing the same way. So it's not like, sewn down here flipped over here you know just keeping it nice and neat okay so now we're going to sew the casing and I'm going to use like a, a three stitch, a three millimeter stitch. And I'm going to put my needle to the side, one, I guess, quarter of an inch, or I wanna make a quarter of an inch seam right here. So this is just an easy way for me to do it. I move the needle to the left and then I can use this part as my guide. So I always look at the pants. It doesn't matter too much, um, but I always like to have the opening in the back. I'm gonna leave a two inch opening and I like to have it on the back inner 
section because nobody is going to look there. Also, even though this is gray pants, I'm using white thread and it'll be fine. It'll, it'll, you won't even notice it. And really once they go run around the dirt and they wash it, it won't be white ever again, right? <laughs> so if it helps you, you can mark two inches. I can just eyeball it, but like, I'm just gonna sew from here to here where the needle is. And that's a big enough opening to put the elastic in. So you don't want a super tight stitch because when you stretch it, you want the stitch to like not break. And I'll just finish up this one side so you can see the whole process. So, shoot, I forgot what this thing is called. A bodkin. This is like a lifesaver. I use this for so many things. I don't know why I didn't have this before. If you have to do pants or scrunchies, anything with elastic casing, this is like your best friend. Like you don't even have to worry about safety pins, you know? Anyway, so all you do with this bodkin is you stick one side of the elastic in and then clamp it down and it holds it. So keeping the elastic flat, I'm going to just thread it through. And having that, this part is really flexible. Having that part in, guiding the elastic is so much easier than a safety pin. Because a safety pin kind of has a tendency to like twist to me. I don't know. It works, definitely, but if you have to do um, multiple pants or scrunchies or whatever, it's, it's worth it. I think it's like $10 or $7 or something like that on Amazon. So I just hold the tail end that's um, sticking out and I'm just pulling it through, keeping it flat. So once it comes out, I just release the elastic. And then you want to keep this as flat as possible. And then you're going to overlap this area by half an inch. So I'm just going to move the bulk of the fabric to the other end. You can either go ahead and sew it or if you want to pin it, you can. Just to make it a little easier. So I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch up and down maybe like four times. On like a two millimeter stitch. Okay, so once it's stitched, I'm just gonna loosen it up and spread the material around, and then I'm just gonna sew the two inch opening close. So my son is on the bigger, well, he's not big, but like he's 10. So this is, I can totally just go ahead and sew it. If you have a smaller child or a smaller ankle and it doesn't fit around your sewing machine, just turn the pant leg right side out. Okay, so right side out. And then sew it from the inside. Does that make sense? Then this elastic part doesn't have to go through the bottom. You can just hold it up here and sew it. So you could just have to make it flat. So like scrunch some of the material up. Make sure you're on the straight stitch again because you did switch it to the zigzag. Make sure the elastic is all the way to the fold so that you don't sew over it. And then close up this seam. I try to go exactly like from where I started just so it looks neat on the outside. Okay, so that's it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and show you. Okay, so here's the pants all finished. So you can see the white thread doesn't really stick out much and looks gray from afar anyways. But yeah, so now I'm just going to wash it and they're ready to go. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Hope this helps you if you have to hem some baseball pants and I'll see you in my next video.